What is up guys and welcome back to the Hardcore Iron Man Progress. We're back on episode 68 right now and uh, in the previous episode we spent the majority of our cash pile getting 99 fletching. So my main goal for this episode will be to chisel out as much Duradel Slayer as humanly possible, getting as much money as possible towards the 99 construction grind, as well as continuing to learn solo raids, which is a lot of fun so far. So hopefully we get assigned some really cool bosses which we haven't done in a while, including maybe some Kuriara so we can finish off the Armadil chain skirt. Loads of solo raids, loads of bossing, let's get into it. First task of the episode is, oh, Greater Demons. That's actually really awesome, we can go and do some Zami trips. God, it's been so long. I can now use the Staff of the Dead with the added Magic Fang to it. Yes, dude, nice. Five kill trip. <gasps> Yo, look at that, we got ourselves a Zami Spear. It's been so long. It looks so clean on the ground. I think that's number four. 375, get ourselves a nice juicy 11.3 mil item. Zami Spear, always love to see the insane value items on the floor, even if they're of no use, you know, it's pretty legendary to have. There's a Zami Spear coming in on a 375 Zami KC. Oh, God Sword Shard 1. I don't even know if that's the one I need. I'm missing like a shard to make six blades, but I forget which one it is, and I have no idea if this is the one I need for all six blades, so I'm gonna guess that it isn't, but it could be the one that completes it. This is just one trip after the Zami Spear. Alrighty, moment of truth. Let's see if Godsword Shard 1 is gonna be the one to complete six blades. Oh no! No, wait, hang on. I don't even know how many I need of each. I think it's the Godsword Shard 3 that is currently missing, so at least now we know for sure. We've been working away in the shadows to achieve level 90 mining, mostly when I got downtime from work, so it's pretty awesome to see. There's 89 anyway. Three levels to go until we can mine Amethyst as well. Well, this is our first attempt at the 4 to 1. It went very poorly to say the least. I've just hidden chat in time. I don't think I got a purple from that raid. No, I did not. But uh, yeah, no, the 4 to 1, that is going to be very, very difficult to get used to, but look at those supplies. Hell yeah, blood runes, dragon arrows, about the two best things an Iron Man can get a hold of. Non-unique, that is. Hey, nice, we got a new PB at Solar Raids. Still absolute dog poo at the 4 to 1, but um, yeah, I'm getting the basics down slowly but surely. Give it like 10 to 20 more raids and I'll be doing it like a semi-professional, not bad at the game kind of player. So yeah. That'll be kind of good. We're about to get 400 KC over at Zami for now. I think this will conclude our time at Zami God Wars. It's been a long time and we got ourselves a Zami Spear. This seems like a nice enough milestone to call it a day. Just simply because this boss is not the greatest GP in the game. So there's plenty of other things to occupy our mind on Duradel's task list that might make for better content. But I did enjoy it. So I look forward to being back some other time for the hilt. Great Ulm is down. Have we been rewarded with a purple? I'm glad to report that despite this raid taking over an hour and a death at Vespula, this is the first ever time we have done a successful 4 to 1 for about, I don't know, like 15 to 20 percent of uh, P1. So I'm happy that that like finally crystallized in my mind and snapped into place. So it's only onwards and upwards from here. Let's see. It's a white, but it's fine, bro. It's fine. And another Orm's lifespan is about to be extinguished. Let's see what we are rewarded with. This is a chunky amount of points, you know, 28k. We're going to start going for Deathless soon, I think, because the supplies are looking better and better, I think. Is it a purple light? It is not a purple light, bro. But we did uh, do a lot better right there on the 4-1 to rotation, so I'm really happy with that. Let's continue to make some progress. I want to take a bit of a break from solo raids to slam out another assignment. I'm feeling like doing something that has really good yield in terms of GP, but... Oh, interesting. We've got our very first vampire task. That's also of interest because obviously those sentinels will drop a blood shard. It's like 1 in 1500, so we're looking at like a 10% chance of nabbing it from this task, but nevertheless... Let's go kill some sentinels. And there we have it, my friends. A blood shard has been obtained on the very first vampire task. You may call me spooned, but there we go. It has dropped somewhat in price since I've last received this item on another account. But that's actually a massive upgrade. Not only can I use this in challenge mode raids later on, and a hard clue as well, beautiful. Uh, but yeah, we can also use it at the two melee God Wars dungeon generals. And I think when I initiate my pet hunt for General Grador, which will happen a bit later. Um, a blood shard is genuinely one of the bigger upgrades I can ever achieve, so big, big drop coming in. Blood shard obtained, 
Let's see how many of these things we killed. 153. Together with some we AFK'd a couple of episodes back. That will put me somewhere south of 500, I imagine. So we're like a third on the drop rate. Holy, we are big spooned. In fact, looking back now on the Slayer kill log, I've just seen that the Viwatch are in fact just above 400 KC. So we got extremely lucky there. 1,000 kills or so under the drop rate. Well, as per usual, I suppose. Also, we have 10,000 Abyssal Demons killed. I never saw that, but that's the first one in five digits from the Slayer log. That's pretty cool. All right, same hard clue from the Vile Watch that came after the Bloodshard one. What can we get? Whoa, what a stacked clue. Bro, we got a Rune Plate Body, Rune Trimmed Helm, and another pair of Blessed Chaps. Of course, bro. It takes us 205 to end the meme. And we almost instantaneously get another pair of chaps. I actually see VA with this game. But uh, we are looking like a beast, so there's always that. Now that we've obtained ourselves an amulet of blood fury, I would like to come down to God Wars once again and visit my old friend Bandos. I'd like to get a pair of his boots because they're needed for a master stash unit. I know I can still use the guardian boots, but I'm kind of a stickler for freeing up bank space. So in fact, I'll be grinding for another pair of boots. I think my kill count last I remember was around 730. Um, so this will simultaneously be serving as a way to get me back on the front page. Since the instance is released, a lot of people have been able to get more kill count at Bandos, which is a good and bad thing, I guess. But yeah, we're going to try them out and see how high kill count we can get in this episode. Oh, we got a Godsword Shard 3. Lovely. That is, in fact, I think the final one for all six blades. I've been pretty lucky when it comes to Godsword Shards as of late. Go on from Zami in a limited space of time and... Now followed by the Shard 3 over at Bandos. You do truly love to see it. I'm going to finish barraging these fools and I'm going to claim the final shard for all six blades. And our next assignment is going to be a blue dragons. I'm actually going to hang on to this and uh, maybe send a bit of Vorkath. But not today because there's been some server issues. I've watched a clip of a hardcore dying to Sire on a server DC last night. So probably going to steer clear of this one for a bit. And then maybe only kill about 25 or so on task at Vorkath to rebuild the cache a little bit more because I'm still hurting after that fletching grind. Seemingly this is going to be the day of reviving dead methods. I'm going to be tanning the hides as I freaking do this and making the bodies and then alking them for money because we're literally that desperate for money. <laughs> I've never used Lunas for this purpose but shouts out to Hyphy who uh, suggested this method. Why the hell not? We'll get some post 99 crafting as well. Make a few bucks from these blue dehyde bodies. Two mining levels in the space of one episode, I swear these stats just tend to creep up on you. We're just going to be sliding in with level 90 mining here shortly. That does unlock us the ability to go ahead and mine the highest tier of shooting star as well. I don't think I have the greatest of interest in obtaining the celestial ring or anything like that at the moment. So um, still, that's quite nice. That's one of the two objectives we have remaining for the flat 90s along with runecrafting. So very nice milestone and I'm looking forward to now changing up my AFK routine. And doing some more rune crafting instead. But there it is, level 90 mining. Very, very cool. Well, best of luck. This is gonna be our first solo of the day. No, we want the BCP for that entire thing. I don't know, that might have helped us tank a few missiles here and there. 26k points. Oh, I think we got a new PB. We did. 40 minutes 34. Nice. Let's see what else we got from the chest. Couple of herbs and spices. Not bad, not bad. And another raid. Eliminated. 26k points. Yo, we just got new personal best guys. 38 minutes. Not too bad. New personal best along with some Quam and Dragon Arrows. We will take it. So we've recently made it to 420 completed chambers. Um, 20 of those or more have been solos. I feel like now we might as well try and go for deathless raids. So this is the first ever attempt. I don't expect to uh, walk away alive, but if I do, it will be a pleasant surprise, and there's a 5k point difference in it if I do manage to survive, so let's see if we can uh, do it. So right now at this point, since we're still not the greatest at doing the 6 to 1 mechanics, we got trapped in a flame wall with very limited supplies remaining on the very first deathless attempt, and only managed to get the head phase down by like 130 hit points, but I guess that goes to show you gotta learn with these situations. Well, we did not survive the first ever attempt. But we did get the head phase, so that's encouraging. Plus, thanks to my man wizard, we did initial initially learn some uh, flame skips on the 4 to 1 also, so shouts out to him. It's alright, but never mind, I'm very motivated to continue with the, uh, the non-suicide attempt, so let's go! 
Man, we got just so close to defeating Ulm without dying. We ran out of supplies as he's literally 30 hit points. So I think we are very close to the point of doing deathless raids, even if they are incredibly scuffed. But literally one shot, man. Well, there he goes. 20k points. How many could we have had if that was a deathless? Maybe like 30k, but yeah, doesn't matter too much. I am learning. I'm progressing. That's all that matters. I'm very happy regardless of the color of that chest at the end. Let's see what we get. A grime torso and dynamite boys. Very, very nice. I think right now is a perfect time to go ahead and swap out my amulet of torture for the blood fury because we got so insanely close to getting that raid completed with deathless and I think this thing will really push me over the threshold. And whilst I'm still learning the 4 to 1, I think the blood fury might be able to clutch out the actual victory for me. So that will be very exciting to get 30k plus point raids going forward, if possible. That was so close. I cannot wait to get my first Deathless. It's going to feel incredible. There it is, fellas. The first Deathless raid has been completed. Oh, yeah. That feels so satisfying, dude. It took us three attempts of uh, Deathless raid prep to try and do it. But, oh, man. The satisfaction I'm feeling right now is really amazing. I've got four brews left. That is really encouraging. I think the Blood Fury did help a lot in fairness. But, nevertheless... We weren't even wearing barrels gloves. What is wrong with me, man? Well, I mean, that could have been an even faster time. And we got a new PB. Perfect, bro. Perfect. Look at this. That is amazing. Very happy with that. That is all I wanted from this episode, to do a deathless raid. And I've done it. More to come. These supplies are very humble. I shall continue my progress in the chambers. But for now, the question stands in our way. Is the first deathless raid the first one where we get a solo purple? Let us see. It is a white, but it doesn't matter. That has not dampened my spirits, not one bit. I am uh, very motivated to continue with these strugglers raids, but hey, we're learning the 4 to 1 slowly. It does feel pretty amazing, and I'll strive for even more in the future. Oh, God Sword Shot 3 again. What the hell? <laughs> I guess I'll take it. I mean, I don't need any more of these, but it's cool to see. Second kill of the day. Oh, we got him! We got a pair of Bandos boots! That's what we wanted! Surprisingly, grinding after such a crappy item and being so happy about it. It feels weird, but we got another pair. That's what we intended to do. I guess we just do another 20kc, get ourselves back on the front page, and we're done with Bandos for a hot while. There they are. A set of Bandos boots coming in on kill 787, just shortly before the 800kc milestone. That does feel great. Look at them, dude. They're very cool. And there we have it. That is kill number 800 of Bandos. That's uh, only seven kills away from the front page now, so very motivated to keep going. That's a very nice milestone, and I assume I'll be definitely getting beyond the thousand for the pet hunt to come someday. Very, very nice. Well, there we have it. We've just concluded a Bandos trip. Got ourselves to 809 KC, so when we log out, I believe we're going to be back on the front page once again after... Uh, a couple of months of hiatus, I guess you could say. Let's take a look. Hit F5 on the general grad or hardcore high scores. And there we are. Rank 25. Second ever Deathless Raid. Just about by the skin of our teeth. I believe the Overload may have saved us. Will we be awarded with a beam of light of the color purple? We will not. Sad. Sad scam game. Though that's a PB for points though. 33,800. And another Deathless Raid has been concluded, gentlemen. We may have just snagged ourselves a new PB as well. 35 minutes, 25 seconds. That is not at all too bad. Got two brews left on this one. We have forgotten to take the Amulet of Blood Fury, but at least this time we did not wear uh, a bracelet of torture for the entire freaking uh, Ulm head. So, yeah, it's a white. But, you know, can't complain of a new PB. That is absolutely beautiful. I think we shaved about a minute and a half off of that last personal best, as well as an elite clue. So, pretty decent. 426 raids completed. Now that we've ascended to front page Bandos, it is time to return to the Prophet Dragon. Even though we've got a Dragon Hunter Lance, I feel like doing the range method is much safer, so I'll stick with what I know and uh, do the remainder of my task, which is currently 25 dragons, snag myself some more Dragon Bolts for future Inferno attempts on task. Perfect. And with that death blow, my boys, that is the Blue Dragon task completed. I forgot how good money this place was. And we got an Elite Clue right at the very end. That is very, very nice. We're just shy of 200 KC, I suppose, every so often when we get assigned blue dragons. So long as we're still rebuilding towards 99 con, we'll do a few Vorkav here and there. We, my friends, have just gotten ourselves the 100th elite casket of the account. Question is, what the hell is this? Get this freaking defense mix out of my inventory right now. 
Let's see what we get. Big old milestone. Regardless of what we get, we should probably include this. God, that is the worst elite I've seen in a very, very long time. Wow. And a gothics page. Blech. Oh well, that's 100 elites down for the count. That's not bad, not bad, you know. Here's to the next 100, I guess. Now this is the stack of Alks that I'm gonna do between episodes. Oh, I'm really looking forward to getting an even bigger cash pile, not to mention the dragon hides. Let's take a look at how much money we were able to make from Vorkath. Just on the 3 mil, a couple of dragon items in there and a few rune stuff, definitely good for Alks. And the bones, which gave us some nice per XP and some extended super antifires. Even though, like, bosses like Bandos aren't usually really good GP, 600k is no joke when you're, like, nearly broke. And we got the pair of Bandos boots, so overall that was really cool. And we, I think, made a similar value at Krill as well. Let's take a look here. Okay, maybe a bit less. It's 300k instead of eight, uh, 600, but yeah, nevertheless, couple of rune plate legs, you know, rune skimmies, this all adds up. All things considered, this is kind of more or less what the Alcabal's pile is going to look like. Let's just see roughly how much we can expect to get. About 2 mil, probably a lot more once I convert these dragon hides, and then I can alk these for like 5k each. So yeah, maybe like 2.5 mil, but hey, I'm very excited. That's going to put us over 5 mil cash. That's a lot since uh, we just began the rebuild. And on that note, my dudes, it is time to conclude episode 68 of the Hardcore Iron Man Progress. Once again, getting quite lucky in obtaining the Amulet of Blood Fury, which has been massively useful in helping us to secure our first solo raid victory without dying. So a massive, massive milestone in that respect. Getting that total time bumped down from like 55 minutes to sub 35, or almost sub 35, is very satisfying. Only onwards and upwards from here. And in the meantime, we made a good dent into the rebuild by doing some more Bandos, some Krill, as well as some Vorkath, getting ourselves back to front page for Bandos, which was a very fun, and I'm glad to have gotten the boots. I honestly didn't expect to get them, but I guess I just got really lucky at God Wars, because I got a spear in like 50s Ami KC as well. So uh, definitely a good episode all round in terms of luck and progression. So let's review where we stand against our episode 70 objectives. With level 90 mining achieved during the course of this episode, that leaves only runecrafting left to go in terms of the skilling objectives for base 90s, as well as obtaining the armadillo chain skirt. So my two primary goals going ahead will be to hunt down as many Kriara tasks as possible until that is completed, as well as continuing to focus on runecrafting while I'm AFK. So those two objectives is kind of where we see ourselves on the roadmap ahead. But before we do that, I do want to focus on a long time dream of mine getting my first solo purple. Before I leave you guys, I do just want to mention that a 24 hour Inferno stream, that's right, I'll be in the Inferno for 24 hours, it'll be taking place on my Twitch channel on the 9th of May, and that'll be on a Sunday, starting at 3 p.m. GMT, that's like 10 a.m. EST time for American East Coast. So if you're interested to check that out at all, my Twitch channel will be found in the description below, and I'd love to have you along because I've been streaming more frequently recently. So if that's your kind of thing, please do feel free to stop on by. But other than that, I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Peace.